Oh, you thought I was done? I'm back with more videos. What's cracking, guys? Omar Esau here. Shirtless because I sold my last t-shirt for creatine, talking about everyone's favorite lift, the overhead press. Uh, we're gonna be talking about big tips today. I hope in the future to overhead press 230 pounds at about 180 pounds body weight. That'd be plus 50 pounds over body weight. I think a lot of people, uh, the overhead press is one of those movements where a lot of people, they seem to be stuck at it and they're not lifting their maximal weight. And there's a few key tips. This is not going to be a beginner video. I have more beginner videos. I'll link that in the description. But this is something that's made a dramatic difference. And like I said, I think overhead pressing 225 is like bench pressing 365. It's a good feat to have. And I think most people actually can accomplish this, but they're stuck in these roadblocks. And essentially what I want to talk about is the key difference with the overhead press compared to other lifts. Does anyone know what one of the key differences are? Bueller. 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 Bueller, no one? Okay. It's like the deadlift, it starts from a dead stop. And that means you have to overcome gravity. Uh, traditionally, when you're doing a squat, unless you're doing a pin squat from the bottom, or bench press, we have the negative, so we bring it down, and then we lift it back up. Now, the overhead press, on the other hand, what we'll typically do, so we'll get in position, right, we'll get tight, we'll bring it out, and then from here, we have to start from nothing, accelerate as fast as possible, lift it over our head. And this actually makes it challenging. It makes it the hardest part, the bottom portion. So how do we make the bottom portion easier? There's a couple different schools of thought. Uh, I believe it's starting strength. I can't be misquoting it. But some people will advocate for essentially having the bar a little bit above the clavicle. So we have it a little bit above like so. And then from here, we'll bring it down and back up. So we're essentially using a little bit of momentum, a little bit of body English to get the bar moving because that's the hardest part, as we all know. What I personally like to do, and I like to think of a repeatable process that's made a dramatic difference upon my return for the overhead press, and we'll see that 230 happening, is that I basically screw in the body, I get so tight, I wedge myself in like a deadlift. Because the deadlift is essentially, when we talk about compound movements, the only other major movement where you start from a complete dead stop, right? So you have to overcome that initial inertia, that gravity, that heavy weight. So we want to make that starting position as easy as possible. And if we have an easier starting position, everything else will follow. Okay, so how do we do this? There's some basics that we've uh, spoken about before. We spoke about bracing, hence why we have the belt on. So we want to have that big breath push out so we're a solid base right here. Flex those quads, fle uh, flex those glutes. We know these things, cool. What we want to do after that, we want to screw in the body and when we externally rotate, so what we're going to do with our hands, it's like we're almost breaking the bar apart. So we can't break the bar apart yet, but what we're doing is we're doing this motion right here. And if you notice what this motion does, it actually puffs my chest up. And if you'll notice once again, if the bar is resting perfectly on the clavicle, I got a strong jaw right here, it's going to smack it, right? And that's no good. Ish don't think so. So what we want to do instead, we want to externally rotate. And what that's going to do when we get underneath the bar, we bring it underneath. The chest is up now. We're in a better position. So we're extending the thoracic area a little bit. And if you look at any overhead press, any good competent overhead presser, you'll see this happen. It's one of the very important techniques. But I'm going to show you guys right now the quick tip, hot tip for the video, the scoop method. And what I mean when I say that, if we don't have that repeatable process from the bottom, sometimes we won't feel tight and the bar gets away from us. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to wedge ourselves in, much like a delf. You know when you got to get tight in the delf, you feel that posterior chain kind of locked and loaded, lats are tight and you're ready to pull. Similar concept on the overhead press. So we're going to externally rotate, we're flaring those lats. So these lats right here, they're out to party. So we're going to externally rotate, flare the lats. So we're creating all this tension that when we get underneath the bar, here's the big tip. We're actually gonna get pretty low, so we're not coming right like this, okay? We're not going like that, and you'll notice that in some of my recent videos, we're getting underneath it. So probably three to six inches like this, and we're so tight now that when we finally unrack it, your body almost wants to remain here, but as the weight gets heavier, it gets lowered back onto the clavicle. But the huge benefit, the massive benefit of doing this, you're like a spring now, a coiled spring. So the lats are tight, the shoulders are set, we're in that more favorable position, so if you have to overcome that initial gravity, boom, right here, it's a lot easier. Pay attention, I'll show you guys right here, what the back musculature is doing, and I really do think for a strong overhead press, having a very solid back is key. Watch this, so just pay attention to the shoulder blades. Here, we're gonna retract, we're gonna be cranking it, lats are flexed, and from here, getting underneath, and then eventually, it lowers back down on its own, we're ready to begin. So we see from here 
If we don't have that setup, what's going to happen and what happens, correct me if I'm wrong, with a lot of people, a lot of the big mistakes, we lose tightness. So we bring it out, core is not tight, and it's kind of out like this, right? So it's in front of us. This is a terrible position because right now it's away from what's called your center mass, okay? It's away from your center line of your body. If the bar's out here, it's terrible. What we want to do instead, screw it in, wedge, and then from here, scoop it so we're down here. And if you'll notice, pay attention. Here's how all these little things add up. The forearm gets aligned. So the wrist and the elbow should be in alignment. If we're just here like so, what's going on, right? We're a little back. This is hard. We're going to be pressing out rather than up. So if we externally rotate, screw, we're now back like this. Thoracic extension, nice and beautiful. From this position here, we're a coiled spring. And that is why you'll tend to notice in a lot of the overhead press videos, when I press, it's violent from the beginning. And the last thing I would want to say really for individuals out there, once you get coiled, set up like that wedge, wedge yourself into the bar, your body into the bar and your one tight unit, you want to explode as fast as possible. It's kind of like the deadlift. Once again, it starts from zero. You want to accelerate as fast as possible. So what we're going to do, same idea. So I'll, we'll have a front angle here. So here, retract, select your grip, whatever's comfortable. I go a little bit outside of shoulder width. We're going to externally rotate so elbows are coming down, lats are getting flared. This feels tight right here, like in my back musculature feels locked and loaded. I'm gonna get underneath, so from here, once again, it's about three inches, I'm unracking. As I do, and as the weight gets heavier, it'll lower it down to where it needs to be. Set your eyes wherever you want, I like it above my head, and then from here we're gonna press. From this position, what you can notice is that that initial part that's hard we stay tight and so it doesn't drift in front of you and instead you can press all the way through and then from here we can have the strong lockout and that's why when people, last thing I would say, when people say oh like the midpoint's hard, it's like uh, actually you're bleeding a lot of power from the bottom. So let's fix that, let's get that wedge, try out the scoop. I guarantee for most people if you implement this because the overhead press is unique, it has to kind of teach you some of that total body tension. If you're not tight here, you'll be shaking like a leaf. Then especially, I'm not going to lie, even when you know, an overhead press plus 50 pounds over body weight, I'm feeling that tension all over my body, right? It wants to shake and you need to resist that. So you want to make it as easy as possible, make the best possible starting position and then you'll be a lot stronger and I think that'll carry over. It doesn't matter if you go, hey, I know aesthetic boys are thinking right now, hey man, that's beautiful, 230 pound overhead press, who gives a shit, I just want to look yucky. Well, if you want to look yucky, I would say lifting more weight, all other things being equal, can only benefit you. So. I think this is a huge tip. If you guys want to see more tips, more quick tips in the gym like this, make sure to like the damn video. Let me know what you want to see next. I've been thinking about these things because I always want to give tips that can immediately be applied and help you out. And I want you to comment in the comment section below because we had that happen before. The Della video, the squat videos, all that stuff. Well, people say like, holy shit, I tried this out. I hit a PR. So let me know if it helps you out. And once again, Thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked the video, make sure to like the damn video, and I'll see all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace. Eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables, eat your fucking vegetables.